I don't think I'm overstating it when I say that the last two seasons of anime were some of the best we've seen in years, so Spring 2019 has a lot to live up to. So what could possibly be carrying this season? Well, looking at the chart, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, because this season, we have the one, the only, Miru Tights. It's a show about girls wearing wet tights. It's a show about girls wearing wet People! Have you not seen the light? Hmm. <laughs> Why do I do this myself? On oh, one shit. hand, I somehow Goku. find myself watching the second anime suppository scene in back-to-back -back seasons of some guy trying to get with his teacher in That's the Best Part, the anime. And on the other, I'm debating whether it's worth turning this off and treasuring the small bit of dignity I still have left. Shh, shh, shut up, shut up. This is the best part. This is the best part. Daddy. Ah! Fuck it. This is the latest show in anime's newest genre. I can't believe it's not hentai. And I mean, I can't be the only one noticing nowadays how the line between anime plots and hentai plots is slowly blurring. At this point, you can basically see what hentai tags you can add to an anime, so why the hell not? Let's see how many tags we can collect this season and see how hentai anime has gotten. I swear to god, anime, you better not do it. I don't need this shit in my anime right now. Nobody asked to see some ugly, sweaty ogres bang a bunch of innocent lollies, but you keep doing it anyway. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. If I see one more big, fat fucking chungus, I'm gonna leave. Don't do it! Oh my god. It's beautiful. I have the biggest nostalgia boner right now. It's like an erection straight in my childhood. Uh, couldn't you have worded that a bit better? <laughs> are you... are you crying? <laughs> I'm not crying. These are just the pre-cum of my soul. Man, what time period are we living in right now? It feels weird that it's 2019 and one of the biggest shows this season is Fruits Basket. But in this age of new season announcements and remakes, let it sink in that your favorite older anime is probably more likely to get another season or remake now than it did when it aired like a decade ago. So that's right, boys. The dream isn't dead yet. You know what? I actually wanted to give a quick shout out to China because I saw this clip the other day in a Chinese made anime and and this is by far the best CG crowds I've seen. I didn't even notice it was CG until someone pointed it out, and if you really concentrate, it does look a bit stiff. It's not perfect, but dear lord, we're finally making strides. Oh god, why have you forsaken us? Why have you put me back in bad CG hell? <laughs> I thought we were making progress. I thought we were making progress. <laughs> Hey, it's a show called Demon Slayer about a guy who slays demons, and would you look at that? It's been an entire episode and no one's been violently assaulted so I don't have to add any more suspect tags. Don't do it! I swear to God, anime, I'm fucking leaving! Don't fucking do it! But I've got to say, you photo have done it again, and I was sold seeing this absolutely gorgeous, beautifully directed, dynamic little sister. On a serious note though, it's cool to see another Shonen Jump title getting the premium treatment from Ufotable this time, and once again, I mean, it's Ufotable, it looks slick, the action scenes are exhilarating, integrating the trademark Ufotable CG and dynamic camera, and I'm just happy to hear a Yuki Kajira score with them again. Even if it sounds eerily similar to her work on Fate Zero and Kara no Kyoka, and that's not a complaint, I swear, because I say the same thing about Sawano, but come on, it's Sawano! Everything's better with a Sawano drop, and it feels like ages since we last heard him, so you know what, to prove my point about Sawano drops, here's a dramatic slow zoom of a waffle falling over to the sound of the Ape Titan theme. Fairy gone? More like fairly gone from my memory. <laughs> no, seriously, this show is so painfully forgettable, I really don't have much to say about it. Uh-oh. I've seen enough anime to know where this is going. Haha, <laughs> checkmate officer. You can't arrest me.
if I'm already arrested. Look, let's be honest. When you see a character design like this paired with the words 800 year old fox girl, your first reaction is probably to think something dodgy is up and hope to God that is not your penis. But dear Lord, the helpful fox Senko-san is just one wholesome ass show. Watching an episode of this is like the real life equivalent of eating a sensu bean. You're just watching a stressed out overworked salary man being pampered by a fox lolly and it's the closest to real life HP recovery you're gonna get. This is like fan service for the soul. I mean, just look at this tail. Oh my god. Oh, I'm having a fluffgasm. Hey, I heard you liked Isekai. So I took an Isekai, an Isekai, an Isekai, and an Isekai, then Isekai the Isekai into another Isekai. Is this Isekai enough for you? I really didn't think I'd like this as much as I do. I lied. I like this exactly as much as I thought I would, but didn't want to admit to myself. I mean, it's just a glorified Isekai fan fiction. Who would have thought that seeing Isekai characters banter with each other could be so damn enjoyable? Cause you got all your favorite characters here. Kazuma, Ainsama, Aqua, Amelia, Subaru, whoever this is. Trapkun. Oh, there he is. There's my boy again. Of course, this season wouldn't be complete without at least one new isekai, and I've got to give it to Kenja and the Mago. See, while most isekai nowadays strive to have at least one original hook or premise before devolving to every other generic isekai, Kenja and the Mago is completely original in its complete unoriginality. You may be thinking how it's possible to make a generic anime that is more generic than the most generic isekai there is. You add a magic harem high school into it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an isekai magic harem high school. That's right, people. We have reached new heights of genericness. <laughs> What? Look, let's be honest though, if you're isekai power fantasy trash like me, you're gonna find yourself watching it anyway for reasons you don't know why. Because from the premise to the studio to the staff members, there is absolutely nothing noteworthy about this show. Eromanga sensei and domestic girlfriend? It can't be. I found him. My god, I didn't think it was real. He's learned the forbidden technique. It's the man who's mastered ultra incest! On today's episode of My Social Anxiety Can't Be This Cute, we have Hitori Bocchi detailing the adventures of a precious 14 year old girl as she awkwardly stumbles through making some tomodachis, aka it's basically just watamoe. Honestly though, this is just fucking adorable. With so many hashtag mood, hashtag relatable moments, it's almost as if this show is actually about if I was reincarnated as a socially awkward middle school anime girl. Though that just makes it sound like an isekai or something. All right, what do we got next? I'm gay now. Where do I even start with this one? What tags does this even belong to? So welcome to the latest drug-induced brain fart of Kunihiko Ikuhara, whose works include the likes of Maruru Penguin Drum and Revolutionary Girl Utena, which if you are familiar with, will give you a much better sense of what you are getting into than anything I could say right now. I don't think it's actually possible to sum up this anime in a single sentence, but I'm gonna damn well try anyway. Imagine if Monogatari and Yuri on Ice had a persona flavored frog baby that was anally conceived in Bollywood. You're watching three boys get transferred forms to frogs or cappers when they get eaten ass first by another capper as they enter people's anuses in order to consume their inner desire. They're kind of like the phantom thieves except instead of inducing a change of heart, they just eat ass. It's about eating ass. Yes, yeah, someone's finally made an anime about eating ass. Ikuhara's work is famous for being very out there on a surface level, requiring you to dig through its many layers to come to your own conclusion, which this definitely is, but that's kind of the appeal of it. I mean, you look at something like this and maybe you see a message about hidden desires explored through the lens of traditional Japanese folklore with the side of homoeroticism set in the technologically reliant modern day. Or you might just see Avengers Endgame spoilers. I would say I enjoyed it, but that would imply my brain had rationalized the experience into something close enough to resembling a coherent thought.
Okay. Oh boy, you knew it was coming. One Punch Man is back with a new studio, new staff members, and a production schedule that seems to have set itself on fire. All the signs were pointing to this being an absolute tragedy. So was it the biggest disaster to ever grace our anime community? Nah, it was, um, it was, hmm. How can I put this? Okay. Honestly, this probably was the most okay. return I've seen. It's really not as bad as people are making it out to be, but when you're coming off one of the greatest showcase of action animation in the last decade, to some of the most bog standard average fight scenes you can find anywhere else, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a disappointment. But it has best girl. Yes, this is canon best girl. There is no debate this time. Who would keep best or girl? Oh yeah! So I'll still probably watch it anyway, cause animation aside, the new character designs don't even bother me that much. Even if they've given Saitama's bold head this weird shiny gradient blush thing, which I know I've seen in anime before, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Wait a minute. Yes! 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 Do you hear that? It's a familiar sound. War is coming. Another long romantic comedy with one male lead, another show with many girls worth protecting. So pick your side, soldier. It'll be a long and arduous battle, and whoever wins, you won't be forgetting it anytime soon. Because remember, soldiers, wars may come and go, but salt remains eternal. I've picked my corner, all right? I'm just gonna set up camp here on Team Sensei, cause I think between this domestic girlfriend and the previous teacher show, I am ready to declare that we have entered the dawn of a new age. The era of the Emoto is dead. It's time to start the age of the TILFs. That's right. Teachers, I'd like to feed all my love and attention to because teachers are hardworking humans just trying the hardest and is it wrong to just want a sensei who can smile with the pure happiness she deserves? Okay, you got it? Yeah, yeah, I think I got it. All right, just follow my lead, okay? Today's gonna be the day that I never throw it back. Sometimes all it takes is one episode. I went to Carolyn Tuesday with quite a lot of hype as someone who really loves anime about music and this being the latest outing of Bones and Shinichiro Watanabe, who, if you didn't know, is the director behind shows like Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, Zanki no Terrace, Bass Dandy, Kids on the Slope. So, yeah basically a nobody. Even with that hype, this first episode floored me. Aside from the stunning visuals, it did pretty much everything a first episode needed to do. It takes similar beats of some of the great music anime of the past, like Beck and Nana. You've got a completely original and interesting setting in Mars, of all places, in a future where culture is produced by AI. And to top it off, you've got this one scene where the two girls are trying to figure out this song. And there's this beautiful little moment when they're just fumbling around out of sync, jamming together for the first time, before slowly piecing it together and then there's a moment where it just clicks and I just felt this chill run down my spine. Can you feel my, can you feel my, can you feel my tears, they won't try. That's all it took for me to fall in love with this show. It could go to shit, but I am already invested. My only regret is that it's behind Netflix licensed jail, meaning not many people are talking about it, but I'm probably gonna wait for the full release after this anyway, because this is a show that I'm gonna need to marathon. So aside from that, it's fucking great, and absolutely nothing can possibly go wrong. No! Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much today to Carolis Jaswinas, Walt O, Supreme Saiyan, Nicholas Tatum, Sisters10086, Grant Fields, and everyone else on my Patreon for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. You know, instead of like talking about anything else, I wanted to give an extra thanks to them today because if you didn't know, a few days ago, my entire channel just suddenly got demonetized by YouTube, which was, yeah, bit of a scare. Luckily, thanks to you all, I managed to get it back pretty quickly, but it was kind of a wake-up call and made me really thankful that I do have this safety net in case suddenly something like this happens again. And I mean, yeah, I guess it goes to show that it could really happen to anyone, no matter how big or small you are in this anime community. Anyway, though, that's it from me. I've been Giguk, and I'll see you all next time.